Hey, 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 this is Shawnee P and it's a pleasure to have you here. This platform is all about building faith and love, sharing wisdom and being truthful. Y'all, today's scripture is going to come from 1 Peter and 3. Now, I love reading scripture, y'all. The Holy Spirit guides me to different scriptures to read every day. And sometimes, you know, it's just one in a day um, but ideally what I'm doing is studying those scriptures and making sure that I apply it to my day throughout the day which is a really great tool that I have learned to utilize you know just to be able to come to grips with what it is that I'm reading and the beautiful thing about it is that sometimes I get the same scripture on different days different weeks and things of that nature but what I've learned is that I always get something different from it all so if you ever have me on here reciting the same scripture talking about it again I can guarantee you that there's going to be a different message within it all so just bear with me and just know that that's exactly what we're called to do when it comes to meditating on the word and really taking in the word because the word is very nourishing for our spirits the same way we need food we need the word for our spirits so we can be full fed and flourishing y'all okay so let's jump into reading 1 peter 3 and we're going to look at verses 8 through 22 y'all now i'm in the new international version and these specific scriptures speak about the suffering that we go through for doing good now y'all know that in life when you do bad you suffer when you do good you suffer but i think that there's a difference in each of them and as I'm reading this scripture you will be able to see what that difference is because it lays it out plain and simple that there are different consequences for it all now I know that doing good brings about great rewards and I know that even though there are rewards that, are, that come about with it all there's a pain that comes you know, we're doing the right thing because we're constantly having to die in our flesh every single day. And I believe that's what the suffering is when it comes to doing good. And now when it comes to doing evil, I believe that, you know, of course, there's going to be um, more of a pain spiritually, but we're going to be obviously feeding the flesh, which is not what we're supposed to be doing. So that comes in with another form of suffering which is way 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 more intense and challenging um because it's an eternal suffering you know so let's go ahead and get into the scripture and start reading 1 peter 3 8 through 22 finally all of you be like-minded be sympathetic love one another be compassionate and humble do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult on the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits. To those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through the water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. So suffering for doing good is honoring Jesus who paid the ultimate price for our sins. So what we're doing is the bare minimum to show appreciation and love, but there's great rewards that come along with it. 
This reminds me of the scripture that I love so much, Psalm 35, where it says, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. And I believe that when we look at the suffering, you know, suffering for good, it means that we're not suffering in a bad way because even if those moments of suffering that we're experiencing are happening they're only for a moment it's not something that we're enduring for a lifetime but what we will be able to do is endure those blessings that come along the favor that comes along and all of those things last a lifetime so we have to make sure that we remind ourselves that it's not for nothing okay all good things take effort all good things take time all good things take work and we're doing the hard things now to reap great benefits great rewards it reminds me of um you know instant gratification like how a lot of people love instant gratification and can be very impatient because they want what they want in the moment and when you suffer for good that suffering doesn't feel the same way if you are looking to get something quick and easy, because anything that comes quick and easy, that means that it's going to be the opposite as far as what you're going to reap from that. So we're going to make sure that we plant good seeds and that we're patient and that we're listening to the instructions of the Lord and that we are following in divine steps in everything that we do. I pray that you all have a beautiful, beautiful day and I will speak to you tomorrow. Peace.